And that becomes a bit, you know, woe is me, but what else? What else do you? And it reflects the troubles in Ireland that was... See, that, that, that was the, the thing. It wasn't... The, the one thing people don't remember about it, they'll say, well, that's your album where you talk about the troubles. There's 13 songs on it. Yeah. Five of them are about Northern well, Ireland. Yeah. The rest of them aren't. But I think a lot of, like, especially people around my age at the time, um, they picked up on that because you had the troubles in Northern Ireland. But at the same time, we lived in Thatcher's Britain. The alternative for us was leave school, go on the door, become a thief, or the army recruit, I moved around the schools, recruiting, etc. Yeah. And 18 months later, now you know someone who's been killed in Northern Ireland. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, so it was this real over there. And I think a lot of people through the lyrics of the songs and stuff really picked up on that. Yeah. You know? I mean, you also had the other side where people didn't have a clue. I mean, we got banned from playing Bradford because of a song called White Noise. Yeah. The guy yes. said it was racist in your That's life. right, yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. That's an inability to listen. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like you hear probably the guy approached, okay, here's a song called White Noise, and it mentions black people and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And he immediately decides that's what that's it's about. Right. Yeah. yeah. And the negative thing towards punks in general. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, if, if you can find any reason to do that, go oh, ahead, yeah, that's what they'll do. Yeah. But, um, I mean, that was a great time of that, and the Nobody's Heroes tour. Even Go For It, to me, that was, when I play now, it's only those three albums, because I think after that, it's not really still up fingers to yeah. me. Yeah. Those first three albums were, were really good, really what I think Step Up Fingers was. And a lot, that was a turning point for lots of people as well with the Northern album. Now then, I can see why. It, it, it was too... I think what had happened was we decided, let's try something a bit different. And I remember Jake and me sitting there and we were saying, look, listen to this song. And I'm not blaming this on anybody because I was much to blame myself. I mean, I wrote Big City Nights and it's like, you know what I mean? It's not Step Up Fingers in the slightest, but we're, we're saying, look, what's going to happen and it lost us a lot of fans, mm -hmm. really did but the other problem was usually if you do that and you, and you stick with it you can find yourself going like this and then the, the, the new groups of that's group, right and then you, but it was at that stage Jake decided to stop the band so we didn't actually get a chance to do what there was could a, have been the other side there was a swing in musical taste oh yeah long, oh yeah new romantics and, and that was just stuff. so out of step with what we were doing yeah um, sure, yeah. That's when Jake yeah. said for the first time to split up the band. And um, looking back now, he's probably right, but at the time, you don't think that. No. You think, you know, we didn't give this new stuff a good enough chance. Mm -hmm. But if I look back on it now, I could say that that's not. That's not Step Out of Fingers. It's too different. It's too different. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah. And uh, it's not a step forward, it's a total jump. It's a, it's a leap. It is. Lyric, lyrical wise and the messages were very strong and, oh yeah oh yeah and, and you can't keep singing about the same thing time and time and it had some good songs at that yeah. that's, but i think what we did was we, we, we cared a lot more about what it sounded like and how everything was played and where the first three albums were more like play the way we play yeah. on a stage yeah. this one wasn't this one was more like okay does then we'll, let's put the piano on it and do this and it's like we never did that before it turned into a job now. oh yeah. Really was turn up the studio and they're like, oh, we need this harmony part. It's like we did in front of material from setting up the first drum to walking out of the studio in like 12 days. Yeah. Um, and the, the, this one was taking like two blocks of two weeks in the top studio, and it was like, what are we doing? Just a nightmare. Terrible. 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 Then the thing is split then. Mm -hmm. um, you were, uh, I believe, you know, so the story goes. Uh, Guitar yes, uh, I did that back home for a couple of bands. Um, uh, uh, Gordy, the guy's drum with me tonight, we formed a band together back in 87 and doing things like that. But nothing. Um, Jake was basically, I didn't know because we weren't speaking, not for any bad reason, we wouldn't have to talk about it. And I was living in Belfast, he was living in London. And at 87, he called me and he said, <laughs> I hadn't spoken in probably in a year and he called me and he said, I'm on the dole. <laughs> I said, all right. Yeah, <laughs> and he said, um, what are you doing? I said, no, anything I can. And he said, basically told me that him and Ali had gone out to see, he said, the Tom Robinson band. We've done a, 
Reformation and done a couple of gigs yeah. in the yeah. Mean Fiddler in London. And they got talking. I said, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. So the idea was, well, this, this would have been September, October 87. To get back together, play a few gigs, get some money for Christmas. Yeah. Have a bit of fun with it. And this is Dolphins Tyler. Yeah. So Dolphins joined us then. And it was really, really good, really fun. And we couldn't believe the size of the crowds coming to see us. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about playing clubs. Small clubs would be oh, well, maybe get played at 200 or whatever. And it'd be a thousand people asking for tickets. Yeah. And, you know, the way we looked at it is very few people get a second chance at it. Mm -hmm. And we did. Yeah. Um, and then when we'd sit down and think of it, why is this happening? You had to look around in 1887 and go, who's doing what? I mean, it's hard to say what, what great music there was bound to be. But there wasn't at the time, was there? I, think I, I don't that, know. I think myself personally, and I love myself certainly, couldn't put up with the, the new romantic, clean, yeah. banker image type of thing. And, and a, a lot of working class people had yeah, washed over and pretty quick. Oh, why? So, you know, taste of the past and coming on, you know, brilliant. And what, what we time. found funny is people like, like your Sam would be there, and you'd get the people that were obviously there at the beginning. And then there were the new, younger group. Mm -hmm. And it used to be, we always used to say it, that you'd see people as they got older moving back in the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they'd be the ones at the front, and then you'd see the ones at the back, you know. Yeah. It's, like, sh it's shining. In yes, the yeah. 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 <laughs> But it was great. Um, and those first few years, when we decided to make an album, that was a great time. People, the gigs were unbelievably good. And that was go for it. No, no. It was <sighs> flags and animals. Go, go for it was 1981. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> yeah, it was Flags and Ambulance. And that uh, Flags and Ambulance was the worst album you made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't good. It wasn't good. It was. It was totally clean, yeah. nice, overproduced. Yeah, that's the feeling I had. had a few yeah. songs on it where it could have been better, but by that stage, there's no way that was still out of fingers. I mean, it was way further even than now. Yeah. Yeah. There were some songs on it, had we had done them in the same way we'd done the first or second album, it might have worked. It's, it's funny you say that because that's, for me personally, that's when now album become a fucking good album. Because of that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I, I, I would agree with that. I, I look at that now and go, that's not good. Yeah. That is not good. And that was more or less to me just to prove that, look, like it or not, and this is where Jake and me will probably even argue now if I was to speak to him. People wanted the old stuff. Mm -hmm. People want to be yeah. dressed. And to this day, anybody that goes to see the band film that's off stiff old fingers now is going to jump about the alternative all and blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Not the new stuff. Well, the, dif the difference in the, in the Go For It album was when Suspect Device came out, he was queuing up outside the record shop waiting for the Saturday morning to come for the scene. Yeah. Hoping that you'd be one of them who got all of it. And Go For It was released and at the time. Boots. You're, you're talking about, are you uh, talking about Flags and Elves? Uh, Flags and Sorry, Flags and Elves was, was released, sorry. And uh, at the time, Boots sold records. And it was released into the easy listening section. In, <laughs> in Boots. <laughs> you know, and I thought, easy you know, listening. Sort of gone wrong here. Absolutely you know? brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, for sure. That is great. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was it just, you know, I, I think we could have done it. We, we could have done an album had we of had the same feeling that we had before, but it was obvious that it was becoming more of a, hey, here's one you might remember. Or, yeah. Or, yeah, that sort yeah. of thing. Which, you know, Jake, I've said this in papers since, it, it still is. People go to see Stephen Fingers now not because of a new album they put in. People go because of the first few albums. Yeah. And um, even me doing this tour myself now, I just play music from the first three albums. I've got an album of my own now too. But I did it, and obviously I'm biased, but I did it the way we did it from album material. Mm -hmm. Where you buy your thing out and it's not nice and cleaned up and, thing, and it's just, I miss that. I missed that stuff up fingers when, when we were doing flags and emblems and when we were doing things like triggering drum samples and things. I mean, yeah. 
we used to set the drum kit up and play it, and we didn't even know the drum kit was in tune with it. You know, the, the heads and things. Yeah. Playing, blah, blah, blah. That's great. But now it's like you're hitting it, you're sampling it through a thing, and it's yeah. like, what is this? Yeah. I mean, and I mean, it, it never sold. But what, what made me laugh was, I think in a, about maybe five or six years ago, one of the Q magazine or something, I got hold of it, and it said, uh, the, I know what it was. They released the first three albums with, and um, just reissued them on EMI or something. And the guy said. Um, Stella Finger said the first three albums are unbelievable. Said that this is really punk music, but then I said, unfortunately, they got back together and released a string of dire music. <laughs> and I thought, says it all. There we go. There we go. Does what it says on the tin, uh -huh. you know. <laughs> so um, there, there, there's no defence for it. I, I'm, and I, I'm not blaming this on Jake right? because I was part of it. But it's, it's occasionally it's good to drop a bullet because then the next album yeah, sounds better. It, does it? I you see the next album's then where I had my okay my story is um, we would had this we had the songs for the album I think it became called or it became Get a Life it was called that's right yeah and we rehearsed it this would have been ninety four rehearsed it got all the things and went to a studio again this is, was so unstiff of fingers it was a live in studio you know with the, like rooms upstairs and so we went and um, on my the earlier albums, we didn't set up in the studio and play the music. We, we did that for like one day and all we kept with the drums. And then the next day, Ali would come in by himself. And I said, there was no feel, you know? Yeah. But anyway, I, I, it was my day and I, or a couple of days, I came in and did my tracks and blah, blah, blah. And just, just worked through all the stuff. Great. Um, and it was like, okay, then, Jake's got to come in and do his, and then we'll need the vocals done or whatever. So I went home to Belfast after doing all my stuff, and I hadn't heard anything for two weeks. And I thought, surely there's some movement now, because this is a long time yeah. to have that now. And the, the manager called me and said, I don't know how to tell you this, he just said, but they don't want you to come back. Now, apart from the fact that it really hit me, it was like, I grew up with Jake Burns. We grew up together, we went to school together. And he had some guy that we've known for a couple of years call me up to tell me. And I thought, what? Um, and I tried to call him. He didn't speak to me. His wife said he was in the bath. <laughs> you know, and that was just a long <laughs> bath. Billy Frank, I oh, <laughs> it was, uh, it really got me. And I thought, for a while, I just thought, what? A, I mean, uh, the, the papers back home were interviewing him. And I was saying the, the nastiest things about him I could think of because. I still do think that is a low way to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. No matter whether you think you're right, no matter whether your reasons are right or whatever, that's not the way to do it with somebody you, know, you grew up started it's with. It's the equivalent of a text, isn't it? It is, it's breaking up with your wife on a text yeah. to your girlfriend. Yeah. And um, then I read this interview in the paper saying, um, well, you know, the, the new album, just when the new album's coming out, well, you know, we'd like to thank Andrew for being there for blah, blah, blah years, and uh, we're sorry things didn't work out, but we we'll hope whatever he moves on to. Basically, people started asking me, why did you leave? Yeah. People asked me that up the last week. Why yeah. did you leave? Yeah. And it's like, I didn't leave anything. Mm -hmm. um, I said, the, the, they told me not to come back. The, the thing that really got me was that they led people to believe that I had decided I didn't want to do it anymore, so I left. Mm -hmm. I remember Jake sending a paper, well, the music he wants to play and the music we want to play is so just a story that went around. 